Hello everyone, I'm Dimitris Mavrakis from ABI Research and today we're going to discuss about ICT business opportunities, what challenges carriers are facing to achieve those and what tools they need to reach these. So today I'm joined by a group of esteemed panelists. We have Ms. Elif Kaya from Turksel, we have Mr. Mohamed al Jaidi from Zain KSA, Last but not least, Mohamed Madgur from Huawei. Welcome everyone. To kickstart our discussion, I would like to ask our first question to Elif and Mohamed, our operators in the panel. So what are the challenges operators are facing in order to address these future digital opportunities? Turksal is one of the unique operators who have built uh, a, a digital strategy from 2017 till now. And uh, we have been developing our digital services since then. It's the messaging, uh, music, TV applications. And also we have built our digital business streams to build an innovative feature. And this digital operator strategy differentiated us uh, from being just a telco, but instead uh, becoming an operator serving with the newest technology uh, and newest services. These services require a very strong infrastructure. Uh, we have built a superior network with high quality operations, with autonomous operations till now. I believe that 5G will bring new opportunities uh, for Turkcell and we need to capture these opportunities. We'll be building uh, some verticals on top of our 5G infrastructure and, and we have started with our digital business uh, services uh, to build such streams, uh, connections with our uh, enterprise customers and, and we have private network initiative that we take uh, so seriously uh, to build out these connections. So we have started with LT of course uh, our private networks together with Huawei. Uh, we will be uh, concentrating on this business in the 5G domain as well. And lately we have been concentrating on our digitalization of the channels, uh, the zero touch uh, experience for our customers. So uh, uh, this is another topic that we are lately concentrating on. Thank you. As you know, Saudi Arabia started a national transformation digital program named as Saudi Vision 2030, aiming to transfer the kingdom to into digital economy hub powered by industrial for supporting a high quality of life for its communities, which will be bring huge opportunities to Zain KSA as one of the key ICT. To catch up the up upcoming opportunities, uh, Zane will be preparing with at least three pillars. One of them is digital transformation as the core value of our company. The another one is enhance the digital infrastructure, including network, cloud, AI. And the third, we will need to focus on the people. We need to uh, up scaling our skills for the uh, talents and the people, and we need to focus on the people. Uh, moving on to our next question, and I would like to ask Mohammed from Huawei here. Uh, the world is becoming more digital and there are many more new opportunities currently and in the future. So what is the Huawei vision regarding these opportunities and how do you envision the telecom operator role in this? Okay, from a very uh, high level, the ICT demand actually has never been higher. Uh, it's actually increasing in a very fast pace, driven by three engines. It's driven by innovation and technology, diversified applications, and it's also driven by sustainability and the green needs. So, as a matter of fact, ICT now is looked at as an enabling platform for all industries to transform and, and also for countries to restructure its economy, uh, talking about digital prosperity, and also for organizations to conduct and achieve better business economics. And uh, even actually, if you look at the planet Earth, they also have high expectations uh, from ICT to reduce the carbon uh, footprint. 
Uh, with that being said, I think we can split the demand into three parts or three areas. The first one is the integrated uh, digital life uh, in every aspect, which is basically uh, uh, needed uh, throughout the whole day, all the time, while we learn or walk or shop or play, uh, no matter where we are uh, you know, at home or on the road. Uh, this is basically uh, needed, this immersive experience. The second area, it's about the uh, digitalization, industry digitalization and transformation, which is actually being accelerated and, um, and also the transformation is being deepened actually uh, uh, and, uh, and it is powered by the uh, willingness of enterprises to, uh, to be competitive and also being more productive as well. Uh, and the third the demand, as I mentioned, is about the sustainable world or green world. And uh, I know that we are engineers and we like numbers, so I would like to give you four numbers. Uh, according actually to our Intelligent World Report 2030, we'll have 200 billion connections, 600 gigabyte per month, 1 million 5G private network, and the best thing, there will be reduction about 20% in all of the carbon emitted by all industries enabled by ICT. The operators actually are at the center of all of this. They are really well equipped uh, to lead in this era and to reach uh, that uh, uh, intelligent future that we're talking about. I think they just need to uh, adapt, uh, work hard to create uh, this value, and I believe uh, they will capture much more. Okay, thank you very much, Mohammed. Now, jumping on to our next question, again starting with uh, Elif from Turkcell. Uh, what are the general barriers for operators to achieve a lot more value beyond connectivity? Thank you, Dimitris. I would like to address um, the main three barriers for us. The first one is the regulatory policy and strategies. Because the regulatory strategy is both affecting the new technology deployment and also the old technology sunset issues. In terms of regulatory perspective, how um, flexible models we apply, the operators will be more free to uh, deploy new technologies, invest into their networks. So I believe that more flexible approaches should be on the way uh, for the new uh, technologies, especially 5G in Turkey. And also, uh, when the network is getting more and more complicated with all the technologies built on top of each other, we need to sunset the old technologies. So these two aspects, I believe, is the main role uh, of the regulators to have more space and flexibility for all the operators. And also the second one uh, is the financial barrier. Uh, for operators because we have uh, ongoing investments uh, from technology to technology for our customers. These investments are maintained well. They are under control, I believe. But when you compare it with the ARPU levels, uh, we see that it's shrinking in our industry. So uh, we need to find a way out. We need to find new revenues to be able to invest into our uh, existing and also new technology built networks. In terms of cost management, we have strategies to maintain uh, and manage well our costs, but the energy costs, as you mentioned, Mohammed, is a challenge for us. So we need to rely on new technologies again. We need to have a green future. And the last one I would like to address is uh, the lack of use cases, some commercial use cases, because we talked a lot about what 5G will bring, all the verticals, the industry, everything. Till now, uh, we try to prepare for what's coming up. What we see in the industry, uh, we still have a lack of opportunities and use cases. So uh, this is another challenge for us. Thank you, Elif.
And Mr. Mohammed, would you say that you are facing the very same challenges in order to maximize your business opportunities? Uh, need to build the transformation from the connectivity provider into service experience provider. This needs a change in the mindset to change from typical engineer marketer to an interpreter mindset because things ahead of the technology and marketing research. Think of the solution can address the needs of the industry. Second, Platform is essential to help operator integrate the digital service into the solution, into the marketing. It helps to organize the solution from different partner with the capability like zero touch provisioning, monitoring operation, and more efficiency. And the last one, but it's the very important point need to be highlighted, is the ecosystem collaboration with leading industry partner like Huawei, which could enable us to offering the one-stop scenario based offering. I'd like to ask a question to Huawei's Mohammed. Uh, you know, of course, harnessing these opportunities is not easy. So how ready do you think uh, telcos are and what are the new capabilities they need to make this change happen? Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, again, I, I wanted to state that, that the carriers are well positioned to, uh, to capture all of those great future opportunities that we already talked about. Um, and as a matter of fact, many of them have started to do those. So we've heard from Turkcell, uh, from Zane, uh, things that they, are, they have been doing. Uh, but we need to agree that sharpening the focus on transformation is, never, is a never ending journey actually, and it needs a lot of actions. In my opi opinion, the key thing is the, for carriers to balance between short-term KPI and long-term business goals and invest in upgrading uh, their assets. And, and by assets, I mean uh, many things like ICT infrastructure, which is basically the holistic connectivity, uh, spectrum, fibers, tools, processes, and more, more importantly, I think investment in people and organizational structure is, is, really, is really key. But I wanted to say that some carriers already started to establish new organizations with a specific industry experience. Others started to partner to add uh, system integration capabilities, for example, for enterprise solutions. Uh, uh, the, uh, you know, one of our customers also just uh, uh, told us that they now opening like a, a marketplace, like a platform for all of the startups to, uh, to come up and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, try to test their use case and then the carrier will sell it after that, branded by the carrier name. Um, and also everybody can win at the end. Uh, so, so I think I think the purpose that the, the carriers are doing that is basically to provide integrated value offering, and uh, and uh, and no matter who is the end user, no matter consumer or enterprise or uh, or, or others, you know, it, it it has to be provided whether it's directly or through partnership. Uh, but uh, to summarize, to providing this kind of integrated value offering requires five types of business capabilities. Uh, number one, uh, expanding service offering and uh, service scope. Number two, holistic efficiency innovation. And efficiency innovation is key, actually. Uh, number three is how to leverage all of the available resources, uh, no matter from network or computing resources in a, in a very uh, synergized fashion. Um, number four, compete on value offering with the end user you know, uh, experience at the target. Uh, last but not least, of course, as we mentioned, how to contribute to the society in dimensions like greener future sustainability and governance. Uh, so those are, I believe, the capability that uh, carriers, uh, uh, it will be good to have these business capability and then I think we will get there. Thank you, Mohammed. Now, a question for Zane is, as we all know, Zane is focusing on offering streaming and gaming services to customers, to consumer customers, and also leading the fixed wireless access business along with user and traffic growing. What is your strategy to continuously support this gigabit experience? Along with the user and traffic growth, we are facing the challenges for the capacity and user experience. 
In order to always keep the services on the committed, we need to enhance our network infrastructure. One hand is continually approach allocated more spectrum resources. Especially for the upcoming Saudi spectrum auction, we are planning to get more uh, resources and spectrum. Uh, on top of available carrier aggregation, on the other hand, we need to get support from the, uh, our uh, partners uh, to bring the most advanced product and solution to improve the user experience. Just like recently, we started deploy uh, Meta AAU with Huawei into our capital city, Riyadh, and bring the maximized carrier aggregation, coverage, and the capacity. Looking at the future, we would like to see more and more innovation solutions. Uh, also, showing on the, uh, as shown in the event, realized on our network building, the gigabit experience, facing the evolution from 5G to 5.5G. Thank you, Mohammed. Now, uh, a question to Elif now from Turkcell, please. Uh, what has been your company's 5G journey? And what are your preparations to have your 5G business focus? And where do you see the expected value in 5G? So Turkcell 5G story started in 2018 when we uh, started our 5G R&D, network R&D. We had several projects since then with several parties, with the universities. We managed to have several Tubitak projects, Celtic projects, Horizon projects. Uh, and in these projects we participated, we concentrated on different types of use cases, uh, how to achieve them uh, for specific industries. And we have gained a lot of experience from those projects, I may say. Now, we are concentrating on 5G readiness, of course, as we have uh, some way to go for 5G launch. And again, if I may address the virtualization journey of Turkcell, it started for five years ago, and we have uh, virtualized our mobile core network uh, fully. So we are investing uh, into a fully virtual core network from now on, and it's all 5G ready, end-to-end -end 5G ready network in the core domain. If we look at the access part, we are concentrating on our transport, the fiber, as you mentioned, Mohammed, and for the site readiness, uh, how to manage the sites with all the technologies layered on top of each other, and also the energy infrastructure that we are concentrating on. Of course, we look for the new use cases, 5G SA core will be necessary. We are trialing 5G SA core with our partners, vendors, uh, Huawei as well. We had managed many tests and deploy use cases for low latencies. But I believe that we will have a shortcut to 5G. Here, um, MBBF, the 5G advanced was expressed a lot. And then Turkcell will have a shortcut into 5G advanced, I believe, because the timelines will be matching. We will get involved with these uh, metaverse domain, immersive experience, uh, time sensitive use cases, uh, of course, the industrial applications and everything with uh, 5G advanced. Uh, thank you, Elif. And uh, perhaps a follow-up follow question again for Turkcell. And if I may ask, uh, what are your ambitions and your outlook for 2030? And where do you want to be as a transformed operator? So uh, 5G Advanced will be still there by 2030, as we are starting <laughs> a bit late. But when we look at 2030, it will be the age of 6G, I believe. Today, we are speaking about mainly in the MBBF as well, video, VR, XR content. And also what we do is two senses. We watch, we hear now at the moment. But 6G is expected to be the technology for all the senses. Like you can taste, smell, touch. So 
if we have all the experience like this, uh, as we mentioned, it's like an immersive experience with all the senses there. The metaverse will not be just uh, for games and youngsters, but instead it will be for all, everyone, yeah, for all. Then we will see the world changing, the technology enabling it with 6G, with all the outcomes, let's say. And also, I would like to mention why we are from today looking towards 6G. Uh, we have an initiative for automated programmable networks. And with this initiative, we had a project awarded from Tübitak in Turkey. It's the 6G Artificial Intelligence Lab. So we will be establishing such a lab uh, with many researchers, trying to find out the ways for a fully automated, fully programmable, artificial intelligence driven uh, network with 6G. This is our vision. I would also like to address the sustainability issue here because we have commitments by 2030, 100% renewable energy, uh, also zero carbon emissions afterwards. Uh, so we are keen on keeping these promises to the GSMA. We would like not only to consume renewable energy, but to produce renewable energy as well. So these are the main uh, topics I would like to address for 2030. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Elif. Now, uh, uh, the next question to Mohammed from Huawei. We talked about many digital opportunities and we've heard the views of and strategies from Zane and Turkcell. And to follow up on that, what is Huawei's strategy to the future towards this intelligent world. And is Huawei changing its focus or strategy towards carriers? Uh, no, we have not. <laughs> so uh, Huawei has always been focused actually on uh, our customers. We're helping them to, uh, uh, to provide both commercial and social value. Uh, our strategy for that is very simple. It is to decentralize our ICT business uh, to serve intelligent connectivity and the beyond uh, to offer digital value to all. Um, and as I said at the beginning, uh, it's, it's the great opportunity is highlighted by three things, you know, technology, business, and sustainability. So, uh, so how about integrating uh, technology requirements and sustainability need with business blueprint in one initiative. And you know, Dimitris, we, I think last year uh, or earlier this year, we talked, I talked to you about uh, our framework uh, guide. So we put together a strategic framework, uh, not just for our customers, but also for ourselves. If we want to build that bridge to the future, what are the pillars or attributes and how deep we need to go and how long the journey would be? And uh, the answer for this actually is spelled out in the word guide. So guide is a short of gigaverse initiative, ultra automation speed up, intelligent computing and network as a service, differentiated experience on demand, and ESG, more bits, less what. So this is actually beyond a slogan. This is uh, a strategy alignment vision between Huawei and each of our customers. So, to, so we sit together with our customers, we analyze this vision, we take this one, uh, one by one, those five pillars, and then we do, we do it like that. So we uh, assess where the customer is in each one of those aspects, what is the customer, our customer vision to the future, and then we work together to, uh, to set this kind of uh, partnership uh, roadmap. So, uh, so this is uh, basically, uh, we see that as a very proactive, strategic dialogue uh, between us and our customers. This is not going to happen just in uh, months or even a year or two. This is a journey that uh, we walk it together uh, with our customers to build that uh, bridge uh, to digital, intelligent world and to prosperity. But I do not want to finish actually 
before highlighting a major technical enabling platform, which uh, Elf already pointed out to, which is 5.5G. So we believe that the foundation of those pillars is 5.5G, and it is not just for wireless. 5.5G in fiber, F5.5, in, in, in network architecture and core, all of those uh, we actually worked extensively and partnered with all related standard organization to realize uh, that vision and to bring benefit uh, to all. Uh, we worked hard, but there are a lot, uh, uh, you know, a lot of work uh, to do. It's not easy to reach intelligent world 2030, but uh, but uh, if we work hard, I think uh, it's going to be rewarding. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Now, our final question uh, is: If we could summarize, uh, what are the most important characteristics of network to support this digital business success? Starting with a lift from Turkcell, please. I have mentioned many pillars. Uh, I would like to summarize like we need to have cost effective, cloud native, zero touch, intelligent and programmable networks together with the strength of our ecosystem, the strength of our partners together and it needs to enable the use cases that will serve our customers, and it needs to create our sustainable future. Thank you, Elif. And Mr. Mohammed, what would be your closing thoughts? I will say, Zain, it is the differentiated experience provider focusing on the two sectors, which industrial and the consumer. Thank you, Mr. Mohammed. And last but not least, you know, Mohammed from Huawei, what could be your your closing ideas? I think tons of opportunities in the future. Number one, operators are well positioned. Uh, we are ready to partner uh, through our guide uh, framework to guide our customers to achieve uh, those kind of uh, opportunities. So thank you very much for that. And in order now to close our panel, I would like to say that we've learned a lot here. We've learned about the requirements for the future. We've learned that there are a lot of new business opportunities in ICT for the carrier. And we're also very familiar with you know, Huawei's framework guide that's able to address these requirements. So thank you very much to all of our panelists. So great seeing you. Thank you.